Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. Um, we're going to take a look at the Sheets. We're going to take a look at projections. We're going to do all kinds of stuff with lineup building, enter contests, really make this uh, a really, really cool process video, I think. Now, again, it's, uh, it is directed at this slate tonight, which is, happens to be a pretty big NHL slate. There's only three NBA games, and they are – trotting out, I don't want to say new contests. I mean, they may have had these before, but um, they're having a 111 with 20K for first that people are going to be plowing into. Look at this, already 804 out of 1,000 people are in it. Um, we made sure we got in. We're playing five of those. I've been doing very well in those, those 400s, um, only playing one entry. So this one, uh, I'm going to play the same amount of money. I'll put, you know, I guess, five entries into this one. I'm going to play the three entry max and also I'm going to play the kick save. So there's all different types of lineups that you can construct. And that, you know, that suits the purposes of these videos to create a process or to continue to work on a process that is repeatable. That um, it's not just hopefully to show you how to win this slate um, or to guide you towards winning this slate uh, in my discord channel or in our discord channel. I mean, I get, I, I, I really, really enjoy the comments from people that say, listen, I used your process and I won this. I used your process and won that. And that's all I'm really trying to do is number one, figure it out for myself, which is you know, obviously very important because uh, I don't know and nobody knows 100% what's accurate. And with all these different new SIM tools and whatever, I'm, I'm working through it just like everybody else is. Um, I have some experience with this type of thing in general. So like to think I'm ahead of the field in some degree, but I'm still learning. Uh, and as I'm learning, you guys are learning. And what we're trying to do is, again, create a process, create something that where you don't need to spend seven hours doing this and yet still uh, leverage the tools you have available. Uh, a good set of projections, a good optimizer, a, a good, you know, a, a good contest sim tool and be able to have some fun creating some good high upside lineups and be able to get a fun sweat. So here's what we're looking at. So here's the actual games. We're going to go back and forth with that. And we will also look at Saber Sim, which we're going to have up over here. We're going to have my stack tool, which is over here. We're going to have the sheets, which are over here. And we're just going to just plow along. First of all, let's take a look at the way the games kind of spread out. Uh, eight games, three sevens. Two eights, eight thirty, nine, nine, nice, smooth, compact slate without a lot of, you know, without a lot of uh island games. If you should, if you want to play correctly, you should allocate at least one, yeah, probably two times the late swap. One after the seven o'clock games have gotten started, maybe about seven forty-five, you should do a late swap. Then here at eight twenty. You should do yourself a late swap, and then um, and then at eight fifty between the eight thirty and eight fifty at nine o'clock game. So you want to create lineups two different times: once before lock or four different times: once before lock, once before once at seven fifty, once at eight twenty, and then once at eight fifty. And if you do that, then you are being as efficient as you can be. Uh, if you don't have the time to do all that, I mean, I'm not saying you're completely dead, but you're definitely seeding uh, EV to those experts who do. Um, sometimes I am around to play perfectly. Sometimes I'm not. Uh, this evening I might be able to. So uh, be be on the lookout. Don't uh, don't uh, don't sell my chances short tonight. Anyway, let's now take a look at Saber Sim and take a look at the the goal odds. And this is what you. The first thing I do. This is every single day, is figure out or at least guess what teams I think are going to be used or usable. And then we compare that to the sheets, and then we compare it to the stacks, and then we build and such. So right off the bat, you have uh, Ottawa 3.4 team total, Washington 3.5, Rangers 3.5, so all pretty similar. Dallas 3.4, wow, Winnipeg 3.4. And then you get the Edmonton 3.8, which is a little bit later in the day. And then you also have Calgary, 3.6 later in the day as well. 
So first question is, be, because these games are later in the day that allow you to late swap and be more flexible, should you give these games a little bit of a bump? And I've been, I've been messing around with that idea in the NBA um, uh, because if we can late swap and if it is sort of beneficial to have flexibility, you can stay, I mean, I mean, almost mathematically with certainty that the later games do have some extra value. The problem is I can't exactly quantify that, but just because you can't quantify it doesn't mean the value doesn't exist. So what we could do is you could, upgrade all of these teams um their projected goal up just a little bit okay from the late games or downgrade the early games uh, i i have a feeling there's something intrinsically wrong with that 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 concept or that that approach to this puzzle is sort of fraudulent i don't exactly know why but it feels that way but i might do it anyway so the way you would do that in Saber Sim is literally you just like up the projected goals. And what that'll do is it will change all of the projections to reflect that, which is a pretty interesting tool. Um, so in any case, we're expecting to see Edmonton, you know, and then a big wall of teams. Okay. Uh, I also imagine that, listen, if, if Calgary is just as good as these others at 3.6 and they're later, you're probably going to get bumped to some degree. So I would say that my two favorites, all else being equal, which it never is, would be probably something like Edmonton and Calgary. And, 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 and that's the way I would analyze this. All right. So let's now take a look. What first? What do you want to do first? The stacks or the sheets? Let's, let's look at the individuals first. And what we've done is we've rated all these by this metric, which is sheets value score. And, and, uh, I guess we have to just kind of go through where all this comes from. So here are the fantasy points and these projections, at least the ones I use are a, a kind of a weighted aggregate from different industry sources. I, I back tested all of them for consistency and I give some sites a little bit more of a bump than others. And for some sports, I'll put my own little tweaks on them. Hockey. I'm, I'm just not very well, you know, well-versed in, in the ins and outs. So I, I don't have my own particular takes. So these, these fantasy points are really going to be industry models uh, and the ownership projections as well. Similarly, it's taken from the industry uh, and, and aggregated and modeled and, and back tested and remodeled. And uh, you come up with this and this changes throughout the day will certainly change before long. And all this is available by, here's the plug, uh, on TrueDFS for premium subscribers only. Anyway, and then we rate these guys by point per dollar, which is your really traditional way of rate, rating players. Um, and then this Sheets Value Score business, which is my own kind of take on, a lot of the sites have something like this, like, a, like an RG value for Roto Grinders or a value for, not Saber Sim, but for, like, I think Osmo had, Stochastic had something like this. They all have some formula, and I have my own that kind of normalizes, you know, how important it is to have be a good point per dollar play, with also how important it is to just get raw fantasy points. So we rate them here by sheets value score, and what we're just trying to do right off the bat is just figure out or just identify a cluster of players from the same team that rate high, and then after that, try to find a cluster of teams cluster of players from the same team from the same line who rate high because we want guys from the same line. So right off the bat, you see that three of the about four top rated plays are from Colorado. All right. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that they're all number one, well, they're from the same line and they're also really expensive. Right. So if you can get to these guys, that's, that's great. Uh, it's usually very difficult to do. Next thing you see is our good friends from Edmonton. You know, similarly, they, they rate pretty high. You have McDavid and Hyman right up here and Nugent Hopkins lurking right over here. And they're all on the same line. 
So Edmonton, Colorado, they look really, really strong. Now, does that mean you could actually play them? No. I mean, you have to be able to find the value to make it work. And the other thing that I will note is that I don't really see any real values in this top 10 or top 15 here. Okay. Usually you'll find one like sub 3K, uh, 5K guy that stands out over here that you can use for either for one offs or for, you know, uh, jamming in kind of value stacks, but you don't really see it. But the closest thing you do get is this TJ Yoshi at 3,500. Uh, so he is going to be probably a really integral part of lineup builds, at least hand built ones. The other thing that I notice here, wow, is that you have this Jonathan Druin, who is from that same Colorado number one line, and he's only 4K. So I think that's what's going to make the Colorado guys you know, sort of gettable, is because you're going to want to probably correlate them with the number one line anyway, and he's 4K. So as I imagine, he's going to be really, really popular, but that's that's the way it goes. Now, normally I, I notice you know, some other lines that are rated really well, but I don't really see them right now. I, I noticed Kadri. Remember we talked about how Calgary might be a good play. Coleman, but he's on the third line with a like second power play line maybe. Backlund, though, I don't know. Maybe these Calora these these Calgary guys are worth um, are going to show up. So those are actually the teams. That are also, what's Winnipeg? No, not really. Uh, the other thing to notice there was Winnipeg. Okay, there was Ellers. He always shows up. So Ellers, Morrissey, not really. And then the other thing, the last thing I'll just kind of point out. All right, Panarin and Trocek. So the Rangers and Zabanajet. Okay, all right. So the Rangers are, are, are gettable. So of those teams that I thought were going to have good, good enough totals at least, uh, Colorado, Edmonton, Rangers, and uh, – Calgary all do show up. So we'll try to hand build in a minute, but let's let's take a look at this this view. So what this does is it it looks at all these players in terms of stacks and it rates them using various metrics. So let's um first look at the left side of this page here and here we're rating them just by raw points, raw fantasy points. You're like the top 5 guys you know, that are going to be on the same line, uh, which team or which line is the best. And you have Colorado number one, then Edmonton number two, when you're rating them by raw points. Now in the middle, we have it by value. So if we're rating them by points per dollar, how would they rate? And and Colorado is number one there again, because again, this Jonathan Druin guy. Um, and then you have Washington, Winnipeg, Chicago, and then, then Calgary, and then Edmonton. Okay, Washington because you have probably the TJ Yoshi. And then on the right, the modified stack is when you combine again, sort of like sort of like rating by sheets value score. So you have again Colorado, Edmonton, Rangers, and then maybe Washington. So these you, you pay attention to which names just keep coming up. So Colorado, Edmonton, Rangers. You know, these guys always seem to keep coming up uh, a little bit of Calgary. Okay. So what I'd like to do again, I, I've become a little more reliant on Saberson nowadays, but, but just to see what building a uh, lineup by hand would look like, given everything that we've just said, I always take a shot at this. Um, first thing I do is I always try to find the cheapest goalie that looks good and jam him in right away. And right off the bat, you have a real good one. That would be Chris Dreger from Seattle. The only problem with that is that he's facing the aforementioned Rangers. So we're not going to be able to build with him uh, uh, against the Rangers, obviously. You don't, want to, you don't want to get involved in that nonsense. The, the closest thing I could come up with 
that doesn't face the Rangers or any of our teams is, is Mrazek. So let's put Mrazek in right now with the, with the, the caveat that you might have a thousand dollar leeway if you want to play like a different team that's not the Rangers, because you can get that sixty eight hundred dollar uh Dreger. Presuming he plays, right? It's not confirmed yet in your lineups. So let's just see. Let's just see if we're gonna play Colorado, right? For example. We would be playing, let's pull these guys up. It would be McKinnon, right? Rantanen. Gotta make sure to get that cheapo to Drunen, right? Drunen. And then one of the guys, Makar, right? See, this is see how hard it is? And it's just nearly impossible to play all four of these guys. And even if you went and played Druger, I mean, 3,100 a man, you just don't have enough value to make this work, unfortunately. So um, it just doesn't look like Colorado is going to work for me. I mean, you could play Drew and obviously as a one-off, and that's probably what you're going to end up doing. But you just kind of get priced out of this. Now, if, if they're – Tough to get. I imagine Edmonton's not going to be much easier, right? I mean, you play McDavid and 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 Hyman and Nugent Hopkins, for example. You're already you're already in a world of shit, so to speak. You know, you could certainly play, as I mentioned, the the cheapo from Washington. That would be T.J. Yoshi. You can make him work. And then you could sort of get it going here. Let, let's let's see who else from Edmonton can maybe get in here to finish the stack. So you, you Darnell Nurse, my saddles are so expensive. We, we have to try to save money somewhere. Boy, that's tough. Edmonton, Darnell Nurse, let's see. So we played Darnell Nurse, then we'd have to play Probably the Druin, right, from Colorado. So you can do this with Edmonton, but it's hard. So you need a center and a defenseman, 3250 each. Who's down here? I mean, well, you know what you can do? Play Ross Colton. As a matter of fact, let's 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 before I give up on that Colorado thing, let, let's go back to that to this idea of just screwing it, screw it, play, let's let's play Colorado. I think you can actually do it with you if you play Colton McKinnon Druin. We need can you play this? So, yeah, I mean, actually, you can. I, I gave on, up on this too fast. Now, you can't – I don't think you can get to the defenseman. I mean, that is kind of asking for it. But you could do at least play this four-man. Uh, and then you could pair Washington. You could – what other value is there? You could play toes. He well, you could play him as your defense. And look at this. I mean, slowly but surely, we're making this all work. So, the more I'm doing this, the more these Colorado guys are pretty easy to get in because of that that value I just kind of uncovered. Um. Carlson, 5,900 for Washington. Yoshi, we already mentioned. Colton, we already got. And you can just fill in whatever one-offs you kind of want here. Um, so you play a five-man from Colorado. You can, you can do this pretty easily, actually. So with that said, I, I imagine this is going to be probably pretty popular. Let's uh before we dispatch with this, let's 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 go to the 
the Calgary idea. So I don't think that many people are going to do this. So if we can really make the Calgary thing work, and we could definitely make it work, but it's got it's got to really get there. And as we as we remember, it looks as though the lines are a little bit wonky. Kadri two one, Coleman three two, Backlund three two, Igor one one. So yeah, it doesn't look like Calgary is going to work. I mean, you could do it. Like look at all this. You play Lindholm at one one. Mackenzie Weger. Audrey. So you play that power play line. Like if you did that, what's the power play? You play Audrey. Who's the other part of the power play line? So it was Kadri. Igor, right? Padre, Igor. Again, we got to pull up the power play. Uh, not Coleman, not Backlands, not Igor. We have him. Weger. I mean, it's not the best. These are not exactly the guys that you you're expecting to get to. But you can play these with some of the, the Colorados and make that work, right? You play these guys from Calgary, and then you could play probably McKinnon, Colton, right? And then uh, who's the defense? We could play Toes. Play the cheap, go cheap goalie from, uh, from Seattle again. And you can make this work. So you can play Colorado with Calgary. And that's actually not a bad a bad idea. You'd still play the one-off Yoshi if you want. Oshi. Something like that. All right. So now let's uh let's have some fun. Let's go into uh to Saber Sim. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload our projections to here. And it doesn't matter what which ones you use. You can use the Saberson projections. You can use mine, whatever. This is a, a different exercise. Uh, I'm uploading them for my own external file. But like, if you have a True DFS with Saberson subscription, it'll do this automatically for you, allegedly. So let's build. Uh, so we go to the right, set on the Sim, which is important. We'll play 50 lineups. We'll just build our main set of lineups. Just use 20 max settings, not mess with anything else. And we'll build lineups. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tweak. We're gonna make sure that the stacks are the types of lineups we want to want we want to play. We want to see how much of a, how aggressive we want to be with our stances. Do we want to you know, accept 100% of a guy if we get to him? Do we want to make sure that we have more than one uh, unique player in each lineup? That's another thing you can do. And then we're going to do the, the contest simulations where we, you know, hopefully are going to pick the exact right lineups for the exact correct tournaments. So as you see, Sabres have banged out 50,000 lineups, excuse me, 5,000 lineups really quickly. I think they did an overhaul of their system to made everything much quicker. Play. Okay, so the first thing I like to look at is just what do we get with no changes? And as I kind of suspected, <laughs> Seattle goalie with all the Colorados. I mean, if you look at the exposures of those 50 lineups, I'd be getting 100% Ranton and McKinnon and all the other guys that I had mentioned. And it, it makes sense, right? Um. So what do you do now, all right? If you're playing, like, say, the 50, the MMA, can you just fire these and put these lineups in? Yeah, you certainly could. But I think that we owe it to ourselves to do a little bit of house cleaning here. The first thing I want to look at is stack exposure. 
and make the decision of whether you're okay with kind of non-traditional stacks. Like I am not, I am not good with that on a full eight game slate. I don't believe that four O stacks are competitive. I don't believe the three, two, two stacks are competitive, nor three, threes, whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually X out using this arrow here, all four zeros, just for the purposes of this video, we'll, we'll eliminate all four two twos as well, all three two twos, three threes. We're just going to keep four threes, uh, five twos, and sixes. Okay. Let's hit uh, apply. And we're still getting a bunch of these others. So let's get rid of the three three twos. And there we have it. Now, next thing let's do, let's go look back and see if that how that affected team stacks. So now instead of getting 100% Colorado, which we were getting before, now we get 86%. And then the Rangers, then, oh, interestingly, Chicago, San Jose, these are teams I did not expect to see. So now what you could do is you could just put these in if you want. But I still think you need to do a little bit better. So next decision is whether you want to do min uniques more than one. And I am of the belief that when you have these sports with such big variants, uh, like hockey, baseball, whatever, that you, you owe it to yourself to do this. Um, yes, you're not going to get the, the 50 top lineups anymore. But I think that you make up for that uh, in your, you know, in uh, your diversification. So what we do is we kind of just keep on giving ourselves more and more until it doesn't let us play 50. So let's just see. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at this. All right. So I was unable to meet him here. So let's go back now to six. And so we can do that. Now, as you'll see, this kind of smoothed out your stack exposure somewhat. Um, and it kept your stack uh, type exposures. Well, it did not keep them pure because now it got all these three twos. So we get rid of that, get rid of that, we get rid of this. Well, you see what's happening? It's because I'm requiring menu, too many min uniques. So let's go back to min uniques four. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Go min uniques four, then I only have to X out a couple of, of these awkward stacks. And now we're in business. And now we look at team stats. We'd be getting now we're back to 70% Colorado, but at least they're 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 more pure. So you can put these in now if you want. Uh, you'd be well within your rights. We've we've used our, our our projections. We've let Saberson build high upside lineups. We reduced them to the types of stacks we want to play. We did not do what we said we would do with respect to changing the projected goals. Uh, I'm curious to see what happens if we do that. But we'll do that at the end. Um, the next thing I think that we, well, should we do the contest Sims yet? No, let's, 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 yeah, let's do the contest Sims first. So let's save these to my contests for now. Uh, I already saved these as my, uh, my dummy lineups already. So I just have to at least replace them with something. Okay. So the first thing I want to do before I do anything is I want to right click and add contest sim information for all of these uh, tournaments. So what this is doing is it's it's remembering for these tournaments that I'm playing, how many people are playing in them, what the um, what the payout structure is, et cetera, so that when we try to figure out where our lineups are best suited, it has this information already, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we are gonna hit run contest sim. And what it's doing in the, in the background is it is, it's it's creating a field of lineups for each of those contests based on the ownership that Saberson uses, right? So like, for example, 
take a look at the you know the kick saves, right? So when it says field lineups, it says um, it will it's based on the Sabersim ownership what the field lineups they're projecting are going to look like. Now, that's an important thing to, to think about, you know, because if you are going to run these sims, you have to presume that you're at least on, on at least on top of what you're comparing them to, right? You can't be comparing them to random random lineups. So it's based on Saber Sims projected ownership. Um, if you don't like that, like if you think that you can do better with projecting the type of fields that, uh, you know, the types of lineups that fields might play, then you couldn't do that. And, and I'll show you how, but it's not a bad idea to just stick, stick with Saber Sims for that purpose. So we ran our contest sims, and now what we're going to do is we are going to go to each one and re-rank all these lineups based on the information that we had. Okay, so like for kick save, we rate all these lineups that we have, all 5,000 of them, by risk-adjusted risk ROI. Let's go back to the Unix one, by the way, for this. Um, and then you'll see, by the way, that you get a little bit less Colorado, uh, a little more of these other low-owned plays like Arizona, Chicago, et cetera. Makes sense. You go into, say, the, 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 the scoring line special, which is that 111. Um, it's a little different, okay, because it's basing its ranking on a different set of assumptions of how many people are going to be playing and things like that and what types of lines they might play. Um, in the qualifier, we'll risk we'll we'll rate that one by risk adjusted ROI. Okay. And then in the blue line, we'll look at that. Okay. So now what we could do again is then just upload these to my contests and we can be done with it. And that certainly makes sense. But wait, let's let's go back. Let's again do that min uniques thing and let's also make sure that the that the stack, um, that the stack um, exposures are pure. So let's first go back to the kick save stack exposures four three five two. So we don't want any two 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 twos. Let's get rid of that. And now let's again let's just go more min uniques until it yells at us. You know, as long as this stays pure. As long as we can still make 50, I think it's probably a good idea to do this. Okay. So we can't get to six. We can get to five. Okay. And then we look at, we go back, we look at team stacks again. Let's take a look and spread out a little bit better. And now I think we're good, right? So just to kind of recap what we've done here, right? We started with a, just, a, just a set of projections, okay? We had Saber Sim run a bunch of lineups. And then what we did was we run a, ran a contest simulation for all the contests we're in. And now we're ranking these, these lineups based on how they rate to fair against the, um, against that group, you know, against that field of lineups that we're presuming. So we could go ahead and just, Enter these now. Only question is, do I want to mess around with this? Let's see what happens right now if I just did this, for example. I want the 3.9. If I put apply changes to games, what would happen? Um, let me just see something. Uh, let's go back to here. Apply changes to games. So it doesn't look like it made any real changes. I think I might have to do it rebuild I think um so like for now let's 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 save all this so let's put this in for the kick save we'll put that in so we're done with the kick save fair enough so let's go on to the next one let's do the um let's do the uh the uh, the, the, the 111 all right. so we're only playing five lineups in that right 
And I'd be getting, you know, mostly Colorado, but some others, four, three, five, two. So it looks good to me. We'll put these in. Boom. Then we will go into the blue line. That's the three maxer. We only play one line up in that. Again, this Colorado one makes perfect sense to me. Put this in. And you keep track here. You, you, you'll see that you know it's from the build. So you know you're, you're getting the, the most up-to-date lineups. And then we'll go into the into the championship qualifier. And we will put that in here. And so we're good. So now we will download these. And then we'll upload them. And, and that whole procedure took about what? I don't know, 40 minutes? And that, that's what you need. And that's what you do. I mean, that, that's my overall process. And if you could just, you know, learn how to do that fast. Um, you've done a really good job of leveraging the tools that you have at your disposal. But I want to screw around a little bit. Let, let, let's, um, let's see what would happen if I did what I said I was going to do. And let's... Um, Let's give the let's give the late games a bump instead of the early games a ding. Okay, so let's 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 give Edmonton another tenth of a goal. Is that good enough? I don't know. Yeah, let's let's put that to three point nine. We'll put Toronto to three point nine, right? Because that's late, or three point three. So sorry, so that's late. We'll put Arizona up to. 3.1. I mean, is that enough? I, I don't know. It's something. We'll mess around with it. So let, let's let's apply the changes. And let's rebuild the lineups. Okay. So let's rebuild the lineups. And see if we get any, see if that gives us a little something. Because I do believe that there's got to be some kind of edge to play in those late games. I just don't know what it is. So we up their goal total by three point by point one. That's not much, right? From three point nine to four or whatever, or three point eight to three point nine. But you see it, you know, see it uh, changed up there. Calgary went up to three point seven. So I'm curious what what changed. They say, what do you think is going to change? You think you think that if we go through the exact same process, it just doesn't amount to anything? I think that's okay though. At least at least I know I've done something. Wow, now that is quite interesting now, isn't it? Uh, well, it starts off with 100% Colorado. But the other one started off with 100% Colorado as well. Uh, stack exposure, 5-2. Uh, we already x these out, so that's good. Min uniques, if we went to min uniques 4, for example, how that would change anything? Still, all this Colorado, but let's run the contest sims. And I'm just curious to see how much of this has changed it. I guess not much, right?
And after we do this, I'm going to do one other trick with the contest sims and see if that fries our brain a little bit. So let's take a look at the new kick save uh, uh, contest sims when we've dinged the early games. Um, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Same type of stuff, okay? Um, so you could keep this, you could keep the old one. Doesn't really make too much of a difference with respect to our process. Um, but just, just for my own, my own sanity, I probably would keep the one I just did. Okay, just because I know I did something for those late games. So again, I'll we'll just go do it again to show you. Save, kick save, etc. Blue line. Only playing one line up there. Oops. And then five in the scoring line. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's um let's upload these just so we have them. And here's one little one more trick I'm gonna try here. Okay, so as we mentioned, when we did these contest sims, let's pull this up again. Um contest sim settings in the kick save. It said the field items were based on saber sim ownership. What if I don't like that? What what if I don't like just relying on the saber sim ownerships. What if I, I have faith in my own projections, right? And I think that people are going to more likely use my projections than what saber sim has. So what you could do is you could create your own field of lineups. Okay. Now we already did that, as you might recall, when we did our original set of Saber score lineups, right? We went to the me medium slate, wherever it is, 10K to 50K. And this is what it looked like, okay? Um, uh, let's go back, sorry, let's say 50 lineups, for example. But we're, we're, what we want to do is we want to create a whole field of lineups. So what is a, what is 5,000 lineups look like, for example? Okay. So if we use all 5,000 lineups, okay, this is what all 5,000 of them would look like. And, you know, you have a little bit of everybody. You get, you know, still four, three, five, twos, and sixes, maybe a couple of randoms, whatever. And what this does is this allows us to then run a contest sim against not what Saber Sim created, but what we created. Okay, using the custom projections and the custom ownerships, we just created a field, build one. So now what we can do is instead of simulating our lineups against the Saber Sim ownership field, we're going to sim it against this field. So let's save settings. Now let's rerun the contest. And, and, it might amount to nothing. It might amount to something. But again, if you have custom projections that you feel are either better or more representative or for whatever reason, you feel as though you can create a field of lineups that's superior to that of the Saber Sim ownership projected lineups, this is what you could do. You run a bill with 5,000 lineups in it, okay? And then run your own, um, whatchamacallit, and then when you run your own lineup build against that field, okay? Let's just see what happens. Is it possible this takes too long? Did I completely fry the system? 
Let's see. Nope. So now we will take a look and we will see kick save, risk adjusted ROI. And let's take a look and see what we have. Well, first of all, we only want 50. Okay. We don't necessarily need to have min unix one yet. So how funny is this? Now what we have is all of the Calgary. Okay. Is it because we jumped it up to point one? What one goals? Maybe a little bit, but not much. The only real change that we made, the, the big change that we made was we changed the field of lineups that we're simming against. So let's go back to stack exposure. All looks pretty good. You can get rid of the two, 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 two twos now at this stage. And when you do this in a bunch of times, you then come into the question, you, you raise this question, you know, is, is what, what do you do now? I mean, you did one completely reasonable process that led you to all the Colorado, and now you've done, and some Edmonton, now you've done another completely reasonable process that led you down this road. What do you do? I mean, the quick, quick answer is, I don't know. I mean, I personally... I kind of want to do this <laughs> um, because again, I do trust the projections. I do trust the ownership stuff and I kind of like this. So let's, let's once again, do the same thing before min unix two Min unix three. So far so good, right? We're not getting yelled at yet. Min unix four. Let's take a look at stack exposure. Make sure this is fine. We can even go min unix five, right? Yeah, so we're in good shape here. So Min Unique's five, Winnipeg, Washington, Calgary, Edmonton, a little bit of everybody else, 50 lineups. We will now save these to the kick save. Boom. We will also um however, however. We're going to keep what we had. Well, what we're, we're this is really only for the kick save, right? Because we built this field based on MME um, structures. If we were going to build our own field for, say, three entry max, we would have to rebuild with three entry max settings. You want to do that? Sure. Sure, why not? Okay. But we got to do it in a separate build because I want to save my 5,000 lineup set to work with. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's do this. I really wasn't expecting to do all this crap, but we're going to do it anyway. So we're going to do a new set. This, these had the old uh, stuff, right? So build two. We're going to upload these. There's got to be a better way, but we're doing it anyway. This way. Okay, we're going to keep the projections. Now, again, the ownerships are not going to be exactly the same for this type of tournament. I'm warning you about that as well, but go to build settings, and we're going to use, instead of 20 max, we're going to do 3 max. Okay. And we don't need to do a full, you know, we're only playing a couple lines. We don't need to build a zillion. So we'll build, we'll build 20. Actually, we'll build 2,000, but we only need we only need one, really. But let's just see. So this is all we're doing is building a set. Oh, you know what? I screwed up. I do have to do all 2,000 lineups. Sorry. We built 2,000. Okay. There's not even going to be 2,000 people in this tournament. But let's let's assume there is. Okay, so we're gonna put we're gonna look at you know I think a thousand people at most are gonna be so we'll put a thousand lineups, team stacks, uh, stack exposures. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of these. So let's 
Get rid of these, get rid of this. We're just gonna get rid of all these non-traditional stacks. Yes, we gotta get rid of those. I guess we'll put some three three twos into this type of contest though, and some four twos. So keep all those. Oh, it's getting really, it's getting really nasty. All right, that's fine. Okay, so, so it's got the thousand lineups from build two, right? This is what the field of three maxers are going to look like. So now what we do is we go back to build one. Okay. because we built good high upside lineups in 20 max. Now we could either use build one or build two, right? Doesn't really matter. We could, we could actually do build two. Let's go back to build one. So again, now with that same set of lineups we built, now we're going to compare them to a different field of lineups. So now we are going to, first of all, blue line, we're going to change this to, instead of field lineups, we're going to go build two. We'll save that. And I guess, well, you know what, let's, let's do the same thing for the, for the 555, you know what I mean, for the, for the 111. Let's presume it's the same. So let's the championship qualifier. It's only 68 people. We should probably do a different one for that. But for now, just to show you. Build two. Scoring line. Build two. So you see what we're doing here now? So now we're taking our original upside lineups and we're now re-simming them against a different against a different field of lineups. We're simming them against what we feel the thousand people that are going to enter are going to play with a three max type of, of approach. So let's see. So let's see, let's go to, back to the blue line, three entry max. We only need one lineup, so it's not a big deal. Now again, not that it's much different, if at all, but at least we've known that we've we've done the right thing, right? So let's uh, put that into the blue line. As a matter of fact, what we can do We'll play three different lineups anyway. So we'll play three, not, yeah, with we'll the Uniques. No, the we'll Uniques two, but we'll play three lineups because I want to play them in those other contests. Good stack exposure, that's fine. And we'll put those in all three of these. Well, actually, five, six, seven. So we need seven lineups. We want all uniques. Seven lineups to go in those types of contests. Boom. And now we download. And now we're off. So these are the types of things that I screw around with, um, when it comes to savers. And you can do this all day long uh but then but not really you know what i mean like like there are only so many ways you can you can you can tweak this at the end of the day you know you're you're, you're trying to build a good combination of upside lineups with good projections that are not going to be duped and are not going to be too popular and i think this is a good way to do that
And this is probably exactly what I'm going to do. Not these exact lineups, but that exact process as we get a little closer to lock. And uh, hopefully this didn't overwhelm you. But if not, if it did, you can come back to it some other time. Because I think this is actually pretty, uh, pretty cool. That's it. Bye-bye.